Max Payne 3 short video game review. With Max having forgotten the events of the second one, we are allowed a retcon and retread with him again tortured over the loss of his wife. Because, you know, why create a new tragedy when you can just, yeah, re reclaim one that was addressed already. Anyway, Max is, becomes a full-fledged alcoholic, and Raul Passos, his buddy from the, the Academy days, is, yeah, he comes and finds him and recruits him to Sao Paulo, Brazil, where Max is hired to bodyguard rich socialite brats, basically. And when some abducting happens, he he blames himself and goes out and tries to bring them back. Part also because it's his job. And yeah, that that already explains several of the issues with this game. This really didn't need to be Max Payne's story. There's really not much of a personal story to it. And yeah, why Max Payne in Brazil? It just doesn't. It feels like it was supposed to be. It, it or it should have been a Kane and Lynch game. I obviously I know that's not the case because you know. I am interactive do those games and this is Rockstar, but it's really not Max Payne very much. They do bring back some of these trademarks, but yeah, and, and clearly Rockstar are not they don't quite know what to do with this character and what where to where to go with it, hence the retread. The narration and dialogue is obnoxious and repetitive to the point where it becomes white noise. No one ever shuts up, and they have nothing to say. Max is constantly doing voiceovers about how, you know, oh, I have no plan, woe is me, my life is tragic, and this is all my fault. Those are the three themes that he just keeps repeating over and over, and he and Raul also have some dialogue, and it's basically the buddy cop, no, you're, you know, a worse cop than I am. No, you're the worst, you know, just, yeah macho stuff, which again, by itself is fine, but it's constant. No one ever shuts up in this game, and it probably to try to distract the player from the fact that these cutscenes, which lead from one shooting gallery to the next, there's almost no freedom in this game, are almost as long as the actual gameplay. You, you get to do almost nothing by yourself. You don't get to like open doors or choose the cover before the next shooting gallery. You have to, yeah, just deal with the fact that they chose the cover, they switched away from the weapon you were going to use, and they didn't even bother to reload the gun. And, and sometimes this cutscene will start the moment that you've shot the last guy, so you can't reload before you're suddenly facing more enemies. The action is overly scripted, the areas are far too small, the level design isn't bad, and certainly Sao Paulo feels authentic, and once you get to the favela, downright alive, and you get to go to some cool different areas, the favela, there's a, a rave at a you know, nightclub, a mansion, various places around Brazil, and a few in New Jersey, and really largely useless flashbacks. The story is quite padded and stretched out because there's really not that much to it. What there is is fine, but even for being the shortest of the three with only seven and a half hours of them on the main campaign, which is either you know, maybe tripled or quadrupled if you play the additional modes in single player, yeah, there's it's, it's still quite padded. There's, there's not that much to it. The ending feels like it doesn't really fit the game that came before it. If it's overall fine, it's not like a huge betrayal or something, and the climax is enjoyable enough. For the game essentially being a series of shooting galleries, they do some fun stuff with that. Like you'll be in a helicopter shooting down at a roof, or in, in some way on a vehicle, in a vehicle, shooting at targets as you pass them by. 
the multiplayer has the typical deathmatch and team deathmatch modes. Also some last man, last man standing modes, which in the 12 days and six and a half hours of multiplayer I played, I only played that once. Then there's the more objective-based Gang Wars, which is quite clever. Basically, there are five rounds, and the outcome of one round will determine the objectives of the next round. And every player joins up to and including five crews, and these different crews fight each other. There's a lot of customization for multiplayer, and that part will probably have you playing for a while with XP's to be earned, special abilities to be activated, including, but not limited to, bullet time. And the, the additional single player modes of score attack, where basically anything you, you know, yeah, you, you, you're told exactly how much, how many points you're earning. It's, it's under the arcade modes, which is quite fitting. Anything you destroy, like massively, and anyone you kill, can give you points. Challenge mode where the developers basically sat down and thought of different difficult things like you have to kill so and so many people with an explosion in this one area or you have to make sure that every single hit is a headshot here and there and stuff like that and the of course returning New York Minute mode and doing really well in these can also unlock additional multiplayer characters so there's that. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.